All right, I think we can get started. Hi everyone, my name's Moshe Weitzman. I'm a longtime Drupal developer and consultant and member of Acquia. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our web hosting requirements and perhaps make a larger conversation about what is Drupal's target audience. Um, hopefully everyone's not too fatigued by now about that question. Um, I'm feeling a little bit fatigued about it, but um, this is a, a group conversation. This is the only slide in the presentation. Um, <laughs> we can do this. Um, and, uh, and, you know, everyone can talk. Um, so uh, I think most people can agree that um, Drupal has an extremely wide target audience. Um, from a hosting perspective, um, we definitely cater to people who are on $5 web hosting, you know, the cheapest PHP uh, web hosting that's out there, uh, where you hire, you know, very highly paid consultants to set up um, multiple levels of caching and servers and CDNs and um, multiple of everything. And uh, it's really quite an amazing um, range there. Um, and so that's great, um, except for uh, all of the negative effects. Um, what One of the things that happens in that case is that uh, the core development team has a really a uh, hard time managing all of these different audiences. Um, and so you end up having burnout in the, in the um, core development team. We've also heard a lot about burnout um, in the last couple of weeks in here. Um, I can think of an issue in Drupal 7 which really um, burned out like a top developer. Barry Jaspin came in, worked hard on it, um, and went away. Uh, maybe he'll come back, but uh, but he's gone, and that's a huge loss for a core development team. Um, the one I'm thinking of is in Drupal 7, you are not allowed to delete text formats. Um, you're not allowed to delete text formats that have any content that's affiliated with them. Um, and the reason being that it's really hard to find all that content and delete it in the context of a web request, even with our batch API. Um, and so uh, the solution to this long, painful issue was, well, people just can't delete the stuff, and we don't even have a way to tell you how to go about deleting all this content um, so that you can delete your text format. So if you create it, it's there forever. Um, another, um, all right, so what would it look like to bump our web hosting requirements? Um, there are three things that I put in the session description. Um, some people haven't seen it, so I'll just repeat them. Um, let's say that shell access is required um, in order to effectively run Drupal. Um, so you need it to be able to SSH to your site. Um, well, that lets us uh, take advantage of dress scripts to manage your site. So deleting a text format now becomes a fairly trivial thing because we're not subject to timeouts. Um, we can go ahead and do it. And you know there are lots of... Um, other things this would solve. Um, there are some other features that we might give up if we know that people have shell access, like the install a module through the web thing, which you know sounds great. Um, unfortunately, the way that it's implemented, you, it requires a lot of your server. Namely, you have to have the F FTP PHP extension or the SSH PHP extension, which hardly anyone has. So effectively that feature is neutered by its security requir requirements. Um, so, uh, you know, one other point I want to make about um, the web hosting is that our current range was really developed in a time before uh, where we are now, which is that VPSs and virtualization is super prevalent. Um, you can buy a VPS for... Um, $10, I know you can definitely get it per month. Um, maybe they have it for five. Um, but the point is that's not too expensive anymore. Um, naturally, it requires a bit more um, sysadmin experience to manage. Um, apt-get is not hard to use, but um, the point is it's more than nothing. Um, and um, 
The other web hosting requirement is that level would be um, the development teams can assume that you have APC installed when we are writing software, which impacts exactly you know the things we care about. Um, and so um, we had you know huge discussions about this function registry during the development of Drupal 7, and one of the benefits, not the only one, was that it was really great for people who did not have APC, and it was um, less important for people who had APC. And so a lot of development cycles went to something that a lot of Drupal customers wouldn't benefit as much from. That eventually got rolled back, so it's a little bit of a moot point now. And you know, I think most people are happy it got rolled back. Um, but uh, that's something to think about. We wasted a lot of cycles there. If we could assume that everyone had ABC, then we may not have proceeded with that project. Um, all right, well, I think that's enough for me. I wanna hear from other people about target audience um, and web hosting requirements, and uh, we'll see where we go. Jeff. Right. Um, I guess one other thing I want to introduce the conversation, then I'll, I'll get to the hands that are up. I'll remember where you guys are. You can take it down. Um, is that um, at some point on the low end, these people might want to look at um, Drupal ser service providers. Okay. So uh, Gardens is a big one. Um, Buzzer is another one. Um, you know. People like Hot Drupal who specialize in Drupal hosting um, are services that weren't around a few years ago when we made this broad range. So I think if you get low enough, there are people who are very happy to take your business. Um, and they actually do it with varnish and memcache and stuff that you would never set up for yourself. So you might actually get um, a better experience and still pay not a lot of money. Um, all right, so let's go here. That's right. So VPS is really a poor term for what I mean. It means that who, whoever's hosting your website um, can deal with Drupal's increased requirements, web hosting requirements. Yeah. Oh, one second. Right. 
Okay, so that's. And not running locally means that there's not a point of presence near you, or yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, you know, one approach is well, the market will provide that, right? I mean, we have lots of entrepreneurs here from Australia. Maybe they will make something that appeals to that audience, right? Okay, that's a good point. So, uh, some research that I um, was told by Nestle uh, was that there's actually less speaker sites online now um, this month as than there was in January of this year um, because the audience is longer, because there's a lot of people who play with the virtual XR actors. But even though our percentage gains in the top 10,000, 100,000 million of speaker hours are actually, if you were to take two users who just want to build a simple site that maybe jars up others, Scheduled in a way that you can't actually do exactly what you want with it. You need to install some type of module or this or that. Uh, somebody can install a WordPress site easily, and somebody can't install it just so easily. And, and I think the bigger conversation comes down to the product stuff too, which is you don't. Why do you need to be able to have experts access to install anything? But people can push it on the bus and don't even have a need to edit it. So if you don't have the product that can just install without experts. Right here. The suggestion is to um, more quickly upgrade our PHP, our base PHP requirement. Um, it's 5.2 and Drupal 7. I guess the suggestion is to go to 5.3 for Drupal 8. It's already 5.3, so I don't think we can go higher than that since 5.4 is an alpha. Yeah, they usually make both available, right, for some period of time.
Yeah. Okay. Uh, you had a chance. Is there anyone else? Right in the back. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good distinction. It's a good distinction to say that your production server might be the one that has to have increased requirements, but not your devs. Um, It is amazing, but it's true. They don't have it. And every performance optimization you might think of, it pales in comparison to that one. So we're hands over here. All right, back over here. So what's the basic motivation? Is it purely setting OT requirements? Or is, is it meant to make the user, the end user, It's more for the developer, um, the developer understanding and focus. Um, when we broaden the talk to what is Drupal's target audience and should it have a narrower tar target audience, would we thrive that way? You know, there there was some interesting data about. Um, we're losing the raw number of sites, but we're gaining the high-end sites. Um, would be, we be happier with 50% of the sites we have now, but it's more focused group, like mid-range and high-end clients, you know, so. Um, It, it's true. I mean, it's something to consider. Um, and how you got here um, isn't necessarily where you should always stay. Um, but, you know, that's not something you turn your back on lightly. Uh, yeah. Greg? Is there any indication in the data that you have that by increasing the OT enabling to more sites, you're not removing a ton of people who can do so. You are changing the audience that some of the people in the site. That's true. Um, uh, but I mean, a lot of people are doing a lot of talk about how the new version will keep them away from sites. And sure, they have a lot of bugs, they want to get rid of those bugs. But a lot of people who work at Drupal, 
All right, other hands right here. Right, so be mindful of all the nonprofits who use it. All the way in the back. Yep. Um, okay, I don't think that the, at least the requirements I mentioned are in that category. Um, like you don't have to set up memcache in order to run Drupal. That wasn't one of the proposals. Um, but w somebody could suggest a requirement that inhibits de development environments here. Jinx. We, we talked about that a little while ago. I don't know, maybe you weren't in, but we did mention that there are service providers and there will be more that could handle that class of customer. Okay, right back here. Okay, we, we don't like it when people copy-paste commands. Yeah, and APC, even if we got that, it would just be a recommendation because it, it really doesn't do anything. Um, if you, if you set, worked on a web server that didn't have APC, all this, everything would work. It would just be slow. Right, so anything that could reasonably be done in a browser, Drupal ought to have it be available in a browser, right? I think it, everyone would agree with that. But something like deleting a text format, I, I think even you suggested, like, those sorts of things, maybe we could start relying on the shell to do them.
Mm-hmm. Right. Right. I, I think the, the problem comes in when we spend lots and lots of cycles doing something that's much better done on the shell. And that, you know, download a new module and install it thing in Drupal 7 would be an example of that. Back here. Yeah, I mean, seems like something that we ought to do in any case, yeah. Um, I, I thought of another example that I'll share. Um, during the Drupal 7 release cycle, we had a push to put poor man's cron into Drupal core. It's on by default. Um, and it does something that's pretty crazy. It like makes a new request back to Drupal uh, via hidden image, and it, uh, it goes ahead and calls uh, something that cron.php also does. Um, or I guess it cr calls into cron.php. Um, that went into core eventually, and it w had been implemented in the worst possible way. It, you know, the second, every single request into Drupal caused a second request into Drupal um, that did a full bootstrap to check if cron was needed to run, and if it didn't, it would stop there. And if it did, it would run cron. So um, a lot of core developers had to go now fix um, this thing that had toasted performance in Drupal. Um, and you know that was another saga. So um, when we start doing stuff that's better done in the shell, um, we really burn out our core development team. OK, Jeff. Mm -hmm. question of whether or not we should bump up either the knowledge requirement or the infrastructure access requirement or the input requirement. And some of them, it sounds like a very large number of them aren't actually directly related to that question. Mm -hmm. OK. Greg. Because that's what, these are the people we care about, you know? We 
I remember the patch. It was a good patch, but didn't go. Okay, <laughs> others? Right here? Right. Maybe distributions are part of the answer. Maybe some distros can have different requirements than others. Do you have a hand up, Narayan? No? Okay. Right here. Okay, good point. Right here. Okay. There's a notion that your website could be uh, in a mode, like this is a production server, um, and maybe we would give messages based on that here. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's truth to that. If you have the answer for how core development should come to agreements, that would be cool. <laughs> Others? All the way in the back. All right, good point. Jeff. Can can you elaborate? Ginormous site that only happens to have eight pages. 
I think that's the only way it has the presence involved to say, okay, screw you to sites that actually pay large amounts of money to fund development, or screw you to that long tail that actually acts as the feeder, not just for junk volunteers, but also people who can say in their organization, oh, yeah, I use that, or I mean, the, the whole gamut. All right, I think that we've out of, we run out of time for this core conversation. There's another one right behind me. So thanks, everyone.